too ungodly, too unwholesome, too anti-communist, too pro-communist, I know, too adulterous, betrays Kern County, California in a negative light, and too much metaphorical reference to masturbation. Hundreds of books over the years have faced the wrath of various states and institutions, but we're going deep into five, sometimes surprising, banned books. Lady Chatterley's Lover came out in 1928, full of sex and use of a four-letter C word. It depicts the relationship, physical and emotional, between a working-class man and an upper-class woman. By today's standards, some have described its sexual content to be limp. But a book that talked about the mystery of the phallus was pretty racy in the first half of the 20th century. Some booksellers even went to prison. In 1930, when the US Senate considered loosening import restrictions, Senator Reed Smoot of Utah heavily objected. And when the author, D.H. Lawrence, died, Smoot declared that Lady Chatterley's Lover was written by a man with a diseased mind and a soul so black that he would even obscure the darkness of hair. Eesh. A censored version was available in the UK until 1960, when the publisher won a case under the Obscene Publications Act. And on that first day of sale, bookshops sold out of all 200,000 copies of the novel. In fact, that case became such a big deal that in 2019, the UK government tried to block the export of the copy of the book owned by that judge. It's full of notes in the margin annotated by the judge's wife about the sexually explicit content. And Arts Minister Michael Ellis was keen to keep this important part of our nation's history in the UK. Saucy books and the hard one right to publish them are clearly part of our history. I didn't say it. In the ebbing, she realised all the loveliness. Now all her body clung with tender love to the unknown man and blindly to the wilting penis. And moving on. The hard won right to publish didn't end there. In 1937, The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall came out. The book follows Stephen as she discovers her attraction to women and the struggles of being a lesbian in the late Victorian era. Conservative Lord Chancellor Frederick Smith believed it best not to advertise lesbian relations because of every thousand women taken as a whole, 999 have never even heard a whisper of these practices. Sure thing, Fred. So how did the book get banned? Well, it caused a stir with readers in England, and Sunday Express editor James Douglas claimed it had the power to corrupt young people and society. In order to prevent contamination and corruption of English fiction, it is the duty of the critic to make it impossible for any other novelist to repeat this outrage. Not long after, a London magistrate ruled that the book was an obscene libel and ordered all copies of it to be destroyed. Thankfully, though, the book got support from the likes of Virginia Woolf, and its luck was beginning to change. As a way of negotiating its release in America, the book was to be double the price of an average novel, making it more difficult for the middle class to afford. The fact that it was a lengthy, closely printed book without illustrations worked in its favour too, as it was believed that those of vulnerable moral character who would be easily corrupted would be less likely to pick up a copy. Back in the UK, The Well of Loneliness was eventually published in 1949 and even ended up being read out loud on BBC Radio 4 in the 70s. I want you to be wise for your own sake, Stephen, because at the best, life requires great wisdom. I want you to learn to make friends of your books. Someday you may need them. Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov, a book about a paedophile, Humbert Humbert, and the girl Dolores who he preys upon, somehow became a classic. An unlikely fate for a book banned in France, Argentina and New Zealand, and banned from import in the UK and US. The scandal was, again, one of obscenity. After being rejected from five American publishers, one who told Nabokov that Lolita made her thoroughly miserable, and another saying its publisher would risk a fine or jail, it first released in France under Olympia Press. They published things along the lines of Until she screams and There's a whip in my valise. You get the idea. The thing about Lolita is that Nabokov and the story clearly condemn paedophiles, so reviewers had to find different ways to justify their dislike. Orville Prescott, writing in the New York Times in 1958, said, There are two equally serious reasons why it is not worth any adult reader's attention. The first is that it is dull, 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 in a pretentious, florid and archly fatuous fashion. 
The second is that it is repulsive. Despite all of this, or because of it, Lolita really did sell. It was boosted by the likes of writer Graham Greene, who named it one of his three best books of 1955, and when it was published in the US, it stayed at the top of the bestsellers list, neck and neck with Dr. Zhivago, for six months. Here's one of the lines that people really hated, and also find shocking today. As one reviewer wrote on Lolita's 50th anniversary, public taste was never meant to catch up with Humbert Humbert. And my moaning mouth, gentlemen of the jury, almost reached her bare neck, while I crushed out against her left buttock the last throb of the longest ecstasy man or monster had ever known. Oh, oh no, 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 don't want to hear any more. And now we say goodbye to the sexual. Almost. George Orwell's 1984 has been repeatedly banned and challenged, mainly for its social and political themes but also for its sexual content. Apparently that stuff is terrifying. One of the most popular quotes from the book is, I'll let Stephen Fry deliver it. Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. This gets right to the heart of the political message from this book. It's about those in power manipulating the truth. Stalin didn't love that, and censorship began with him in the 1950s. The novel was published in 1949, by the way. However, while Stalin was criticising its anti-communist message, as the years went on and we hit 1981, the book was challenged in Florida for its pro-communist message. Make your mind up, people. As recently as 2019, China put some sanctions against the book, but not as you might imagine. You could still buy a copy of 1984, but mentions of it on social media were censored. This one is clearly as relevant as ever. From the political to the obscure, Alice in Wonderland was banned for having too many talking animals, or just for having any at all. This one I get. I'm joking, I didn't get it at all. I loved Homeward Bound as a kid. The restrictions on these Lewis Carroll novels came from China in 1931 on the grounds that animals should not use human language. General Ho Chien believed that portraying animals and humans as having the same level of intelligence was disastrous for children and extremely insulting to humans overall. In fairness, here's a talking caterpillar. One side will make you grow taller, and the other side will make you grow shorter. Insulting or what? Jumping forward a bit more, there was also a fair amount of concern in 1960s America that Alice in Wonderland promoted drug use. And to finish more or less where we started, Alice in Wonderland was also banned from public schools in New Hampshire in 1900 for promoting masturbation and sexual fantasies, though these accusations were likely more based on the life of the author than the content of the novel. So why not fill your ears with one or more of these banned books and see if you can figure out for yourself what all the fuss was about? <laughs>